welcome to Live United. My name is Karen Knapp, President, United Way of St. Lucie County. Today we are going to interview some uh, guests, and these people are associated with the agencies and programs funded by United Way of St. Lucie County. And we want to welcome our guests today from Data. Thank welcome. You. Thank you. Uh, you know, when we talk about <coughs> Data, you know, it was an acronym. <laughs> Uh, what does that stand for and what can we tell people about your mission? Well, it stands for Drug Abuse Treatment Association. We were formed about 30 years ago. We're a private, not-for-profit agency and we provide substance use services. Our mission is to provide quality, effective programs for primarily juveniles who are experience substance abuse problems and or juvenile delinquency. And we teach them the skills to become productive citizens mm -hmm. in our communities. Right. Uh, let's talk about some of the programs that you um, have there at DATA. Okay, we have our prevention programs, mm -hmm. Project Success. We are in seven schools in St. Lucie County. It's an evidence-based model. Um, we go into the schools and it's four components. We do a prevention education series, which we target the entire school and we teach them this evidence-based curriculum. We also do parenting classes where we offer skills training to parents who want to come in and um, get our services and it's free, no cost. We offer individual sessions and that we meet with the kids and we do an individualized treatment plan based on the problems that they're having in life. And then the fourth component is an environmental awareness where we talk about red ribbon activities, domestic violence awareness, um, and that's the four components of project success. We also do aftercare, and we do outpatient services and residential and intervention. So we provide a full continuum of care, and we do HIV too. Mm -hmm. So if a parent has a concern about um, their child and they, they would contact you, and how easy it is, is it for them to get into the programs? It's very easy. Um, as I said, we're able to provide a continuum of services. Um, so we do a screening, and based on the screening, we determine which program would better suit that client's need. So if we determine residential, then we refer them to Walton and his program. Mm -hmm or they may not be using but have dabbled once or twice, then we would refer them to our intervention program. Is there anything you could tell us about your residential program and um, the clients that you have there and how they're, they're served? Certainly. Uh, the residential program is, serves uh, clients 13 up to the age of 18. Uh, we have three major components of the, of the program, behavioral, educational, and therapeutic. The educational component is provided by St. Lucie County Schools, uh, so the kids get credit for the classes that they do take, and we put a great deal of em emphasis on the education. The therapeutic component um, is we have therapists that work with the um, clients and the families to develop treatment plans. Our primary focus is substance abuse, but uh, many other problems that the kids come in with, um, educational issues, family issues, grief issues, whatever it may be, we develop a treatment plan for. And the client is in, and the family is involved with um, helping us develop the treatment plan. And that's pretty much the roadmap to, to completing the program is um, they're assigned certain uh, treatment initiatives that they must complete. Um, the education, the um, behavioral component is um, we're a hands-off facility. We don't restrain kids. We're not a secure facility. Um, so pretty much what we use is a, a, a point system. The clients, um, every major activity they've been involved with from the time they get up to the time they go to bed is assigned a certain number of points. So if the client completes their, their activity, they earn their points. If they don't, they don't earn their points or a certain percentage of those points. We also work on a level system. <clears throat> when a client comes in, they're on orientation level, and then it's levels one, two, three, four, five. So there's six levels all together with the program. The higher the level they go, the um, more privileges that the clients get, but also there's more expectations. And um, once the client, to go from one, at one level to another, they must complete um, all their treatment work for that particular level. 
they must have a certain percentage of their behavioral points, and they um, they're just pretty much just showing progress throughout the program. And uh, the, the program is designed to be four to six months, but it really depends on the progress of the of the client. They not, so we don't do time; it's looking at the progress of, of the client. And um, the therapeutic part is also the, the families are involved. Uh, they have the parents come in for family counseling uh, at least once a week or more if necessary. Uh, we have AA and NA, Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, that come in several times during the week um, and, and provide meetings to, to expose the clients to some self-help type things. Um, and once the client reaches level two, they start getting home passes. And we slowly integrate the clients back into the home, back into the community. Home passes are very, very important. It gives the, uh, the clients an opportunity to, uh, well, A, to say goodbye to their old friends and uh, meet new friends, find um, you know, just productive, fun things to do in the, in the community. And um, once they complete residential, then we would they would be referred back to aftercare or outpatient for continuing services. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you: Do you have clients that do end up coming back to your facility, and in, is, is is that allowed? And how well, so, well, yeah, absolutely, it is. Sometimes, I mean, so, un unfortunately, sometimes relapse is is part of the the, the treatment. Um, but if a client does relapse and they need residential again, absolutely, they would come back. Mm -hmm. So the age group is what again now? Uh, 13 up to the age of 18. Okay, so after 18, what, what do we have in our community for those individuals? Well, we would refer them to, a, to an adult facility. Now, our outpatient um, does, does will, will, do, they do see adults, but residential, we have no um, adult residential. How important is, to have the, is it to have the parents or guardians involved? Extremely important. Uh, because that's where the support is, and a lot of times, um, and, and we we see a lot of I issues with parents. Um, things such as simple as just you know having a family meal once in, once a day. Um, a lot of the times, the parents are are pulled back and forth between work and, and those types of things. So the par the kids are just really not sometimes supervised as, as best they could, um, and we try to get the parents to to to, to know the, 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 um, the their kids' friends. Mm -hmm. um, so we put a lot of emphasis on, on, on that. Mm -hmm. And we talked about their uh, possibly the children fi possibly finding new friends. How important is it to get out of the peer group that they've been involved in and, and get into a it new It's very important. Uh, peer pressure works both ways, positive or negative. Uh, so the, all the kids come into us, they are um, you know, pretty much with negative peers. Um, so that's part of the home passes and part of the treatment plan is to get involved in positive activities where they're going to have a much more likelihood of finding more, more positive friends. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit more in detail about your outpatient program. Is there anything that you've not touched on that we could uh, bring up about that? Well, our outpatient program is typically three months. Mm -hmm. um, we use something called Adolescence Community Reinforcement Approach. That's an evidence-based program. Mm -hmm. um, our primary target population is juveniles. However, we do serve adults, and the juveniles, most of our cases are referred to us by Department of Juvenile Justice. However, we do take self-referrals, and we do have some Marchman Act. Now, the outpatient program, the client will have to come in at least once a week for individual sessions. They also, we recommend groups, but, um, because of transportation issues, sometimes they may not be able to make it to groups. So at a minimum, they have to come to individual sessions. Um, the sessions are geared, the first thing you do is an assessment. Based on the information gleaned from the assessment, we develop the treatment plan. And the treatment plan will address the issues um, that the clients need to resolve. The, therapy, the therapists work very closely with the clients um, to get them to achieve their goals. Mm -hmm. And we also have a on-site program where we go into the homes. If they're unable to come to our office, we can take the services into the home. How often does that happen when you go into the homes? Once a week. No, I mean, how often do you have where people can't come in? I mean, the percentage of individuals? I'd, I'd probably say about 10%. Okay. Yeah. All right. Is there a waiting list? No, at our outpatient programs, we do not have a waiting list. What um, about for the re your regular program? The uh, For residential, residential, from time to time? It's from time to time, we have a wait list, but it's, we have 20 beds here in, in Fort Pierce, so um, every now and then there'll be a wait, wait, a wait list. However, if they are, are put on the wait list, they receive intensive outpatient treatment until a bed comes available. And partnerships are important because you, you brought up the school district, and, it's, I, and I know how important it is. When you, know, when you think about it, 
uh, when I'm interviewing so many agencies, the school districts involved in their participation in the success of the program. Oh, ab absolutely. We have a great right. uh, relationship with the St. Lucie County Schools. Uh, they provide our teachers, their curriculum. Uh, just, 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 we couldn't do it without them. Mm -hmm. um, do people have to pay for your services? If they have insurance, um, they have to go through their insurance. Um, if they don't have insurance and they don't have Medicaid, this is for outpatient, then we do what is called a sliding scale. So it's based on their income and the number of family, number of people in the home. For residential, we don't take Medicaid, but we also do a sliding scale. So tell us once again how people can get into your program, any of the programs that you, we mentioned. Self-referral, Department of Juvenile Justice, law enforcement, um, someone in the community, a neighbor, Marchman Acts. That, that's it. And if they're, if they're interested, they can call 772-595-3322 uh, for, for information. And your funding sources, we know you receive some funding from United Way. And let's talk about your other funding sources. Our primary funder is Southeast Florida Behavioral Health Network. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they receive funding from Department of Children and Families. Let's, let's, you know, when you think about it, some of the programs that United Way funds and that are here uh, in St. Lucie County, what, what if we didn't have these programs? You know, how, how would the community be without the programs. Um, we have a few minutes left. You have, your, your program is so valuable and it, it really helps uh, hit on issues that are so vitally important to the family structure. Uh, is there anything else you want to say about your program? Well, I'll say that the pro you mentioned what would happen if we didn't have these programs. Mm -hmm. As you know, substance use issue is a big problem in United States of America. Um, we do something with the school district called the Florida Youth Substance Abuse Survey, mm -hmm. and basically it states that kids do use marijuana and kids do use alcohol. So if we didn't have these problems to want prevent it, or if they're already using to go to outpatient or res, um, we'd have a society of people running amok. Right, right. So we want to thank you for all that you do for our community. And um, is there anything else that we can bring up that we might have forgot to No, mention? I would just like to thank the United Way of St. Lucie County for, uh, for, for the funding, because without some of that funding, just some of the services we just simply would not be able to provide. Yeah. Well, we want to thank you for what you do, and we want to thank you for being with, with us here today. And we'll be right back. Take my hand and start a brand new day. And together. Underneath everything we are, underneath everything we do, we are all people, connected, interdependent, united. And when we reach out a hand to one, we can influence the condition of all. That's what it means to live united. Welcome back to Live United. Uh, our guest now uh, is from the ARC. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Uh, the ARC is such a wonderful agency. It helps so many people in our community. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what your mission and what you do. Okay. Our mission basically is to empower these people and, and to help them obtain all of the services that they can get. And we do a lot more behind the scenes than, you know, we can go into, but uh, we help these people, we improve their lives, we help them help themselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's talk about the types of people that you serve and um, the challenges that they have and their families have as a result. Okay, well, the majority of the people that I work with are the children. And uh, we have an after school program that's really very needed in this county. Uh, these children can't be left alone. They, they uh, sometimes come from families where there's a single mom. Mom really needs to work. And while their children are at our after school program, mom knows that they're being cared for. And uh, we also run into a new single dad 
that, you know, gets custody of his children and he might have, you know, more than one child and they need our help. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we do a little bit more than just keeping them after school. We make phone calls, we find resources, we touch bases with our other agencies here in this county mm -hmm. and get what they need or help them. Working with kids uh, with special needs uh, is um, uh, um, very challenging at times and the people that do that uh, need specific training. Let's talk about your staff and how they work well with all the children with special needs. Oh, yeah, our staff are awesome. Uh, the kids ask for us by name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what's really, what's really neat is that our um, initial uh, preempt into uh, our program, we will sit for 70 hours, not, you know, at the same place, but our, our orientation is a good 70 hours, and most all of us, we, we do in-depth background checks on everybody and, you know, make sure that they understand, and we don't sugarcoat it, and, and we let them know, this is not a daycare. We want you to know these children have special needs. These are going to be kids that are going to um, they're going to shriek really loud. They're going to try to run away. They uh, will constantly be into things. They're not going to sit down and follow a study plan or a curriculum. So we have to engage the staff into trying to make this an interesting place for these kids to come after school and summer camp. Yeah, let's talk about your summer program. Oh, yeah, <laughs> summer camp. Ten weeks. Oh. Yeah. And we run Monday through Friday. We open at 7 o'clock in the morning. And I can tell you, I have gotten there uh, early nearly every day for summer camp. And never fails that there's a parent, you know, outside. And what's so cool is these parents know you, their kids are just so excited to come. They can't hardly stand it. And... Uh, They'll, they'll come in at 7, and we're open all day long until 6 in the evening. So that gives the working moms that or dads that uh, work out of our area a chance to get there to get them if they're not being transported, because we do have transportation for mm -hmm. summer camp. Is there a cost to your summer program? Yes, there is. There's a $35 uh, one. It's, it's uh, $35 a week for them to come if mom and dad are bringing them and pick them up. And there is an additional charge if they're going to ride the bus. That's going to be $50 for the week. But for that $50, you get field trips. And we, we divide the field trips up into um, just in such a way that they can benefit from the, the reason that we took them on the community outing. In other words, we're not going to take, you know, all of the little ones with the teenagers because the teenagers might have another agenda. Maybe they want to walk together as a group. They want to listen to their kind of music. And the little kids, you know, they might want to go, oh, toys, I'll play. So, yeah, um, the, the summer camp is very exciting and that's the time of year that you know all the staffs on we've got you know a ratio of one to five so you can imagine if we have 40 kids and we have eight staff and we're dividing them up nobody is sitting everybody is on the run mm -hmm. and we tell people when they come to visit and they do they come to visit all the time and uh, we tell them it might look like chaos to you, but I can guarantee you, we know what's going on. We know, you know, where these kids right. are. We've, we've got our, our eyes. <laughs> uh, let's talk about how someone would register for your program. Okay. Summer program. Now, the enrollment process, it seems like a lot, but I mean, we're taking care of a very precious person here. And so we need to know your doctor. We need emergency phone numbers and what we start out with our initial packet is uh, it's pretty intense. We need to know if your child's on medication, uh, if they're allergic to anything. So after we get 
all of the paperwork finished and all the I's dotted and the T's crossed, then we we have another, you know, little wait period because then we've got to make the phone calls. If it's an after school program, we need to make sure that if the child is going to a school out of our zone, which we're in the green zone, and frequently the buses will bring them to our program, and we just have to hammer out how that's going to work, and then whether we're taking them home or if mom's going to come and get them. And you mentioned that you don't just babysit, but you work on the skills, the yeah. individual skills. They don't get to come and lay down on the couch and take a nap, and it's not a place where they're going to hang out and watch TV for a couple of hours. We um, keep them um, motivated with their schoolwork. A, a lot of them have portals from their schools, and we have a classroom in the back, and we only let six at a time in there so that they can be constructive with their homework. If they have to go into this um, portal for their school, it'll tell them what's due and what they need to be working on. Now, we also um, keep them during the summertime um, from regressing what they've learned and whether the day is going to be all about geography. Then we try to utilize everything that day to make that day count. If it's going to be math, we, we've even taken them shopping before so that they could learn the value of money. And we would say, you know, to the parents, we're going to go on a trip today. You might want to send a couple of dollars because we're going to learn about, you know, counting money, counting change. Mm -hmm. And you had mentioned that you provide transportation. Yes, we do. Yeah, that's important. That's important. Now, the way that that generally works is that our... Uh, buses will go out into the community and pick these children up all over and we go way into Port St. Lucie and make a big loop and they will come back to our program and generally they're there by 930 in the morning which is when we take um, roll call for summer camp that way we know you know how many lunches to make and we are a summer food program spot so they're going to eat healthy and they're going to get you know their their uh, snacks and we're going to take them out and show them off to the world. We are asking uh, out in the community because we're going to try something different this year. Um, we've we've uh, made a couple of appeals to a few churches and people that know of maybe some seniors or someone that needs things done that our teens can go out and give back. Was we, we're big into giving back because so many people have given to us. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. our kids worked last summer at Kingdom Harvest. They, uh, they had a whole aisle. It was all their aisle. And um, we go, we'll pull weeds, we will water, we'll wash windows, sweep, or do anything, little things, you know, that, that these kids feel so, so good to give back, you know. Oh, wow, that's wonderful. That's one thing. You just told me something I didn't know about your program. Yeah. And we talked about uh, what it does for the individuals, you know, the client, your clients. Let's talk about how important your program is to the families and to our community. Our community doesn't have really any place that these kids as a group can go to that, you know, they, that they can get the, the type and the level of, of care that they get with us. Now, because, like I said before, we have kids who are nonverbal. We have to kind of sort of learn uh, sign language. We've got to learn, you know, their mannerisms. And a lot of daycares and programs aren't set up for, you know, your, your kids with the autism spectrum who you can tell them over and over and over and over and over again. And you can do it again tomorrow and the next day and the next day. Our families think of us as extended family to them, you know, and they know that they can call us. And they do. I get phone calls all the time. And it'll be, you know, simple things like, you know, Johnny or, or Susie has to go stay with their dad, you know, for a few weeks. Is that going to be a problem? Are they going to get kicked out of the program? And we go, no, no. And bringing, bringing that into light, uh, we do have grandparents that have custody like all summer and so we've made it known that if they just don't know what to do with their kids bring them to us because you know those kids need respite too 
they need to have friends and they they need to feel like you know that they own something and and when you walk in through our program you can see that the kids live there they kick their shoes off and you know that's their place <laughs> united way also funds the round tables kids at hope initiative and let's talk how about how the arc um, sort of uh, uses that initiative oh, we do. to improve the lives of the children that you serve well I like it I like it a lot because I've seen uh, the kids bloom and blossom they love to talk about time travel and we do that a lot we tell them you know we're the treasure hunters and a lot of times we'll just randomly select someone to send a card home with and we'll give them like an ace of diamonds and tell them you know go home and tell your mom that you got this at the program and see what she says about it because it's got a little a little written um, explanation on the card to tell them and like the the clubs and, and the kids can tell you about the aces and instead of saying like grace before they eat there's usually five or six of them that like to do the kids at hope you know pledge mm -hmm. and um, we do we we time travel every week we like to ask where do you see yourself in four years and it's amazing you know it's really amazing that these kids have um, they've got such energy and enthusiasm about their future I I just think that the more that we give them the more more tools that we give them to succeed you know the better that they're going to be a lot of them don't want to live at home forever. They have dreams. <laughs> right. The ARC has a volunteer board of directors. Uh, yes. You have other uh, volunteers that are important to the success of your program? Yes, we do. Um, as a matter of fact, we have had um, the Indian River State College send over people who were going through classes and getting credits to come over and work with us as a volunteer and they got more than they bargained for. We have had high school kids come over and spend, you know, a few hours because, you know, all the high school kids have to have volunteer, mm -hmm. you know, in the community in order to graduate. So right. we love it because, I mean, that, that, that's another mentor for these kids and they look up to them. Well, we want to thank the ARC and you for joining us today. Uh, we want to thank you for all that you do in the community. Thank you. And we want to thank you for joining us. United Way's mission is to improve lives by mobilizing the caring power of our community. And we want to thank all the people who have volunteered to help not only the agencies we fund, but also United Way. Thank you for joining us.